fractal friends, this is Austin Buddy, and this is part two of my Axe 8 edit tutorial series. And what we're going to do is go through a couple of these um, drop down menus and what they do, uh, starting with the preset, then block, then tool. So let's go to preset. I've got a blank preset here right now. So you'll notice when I open up the preset here, for example, it, these are grayed out at the moment because there's really nothing in this preset. I can't really do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw an amp in there. I'm going to throw a cab in there. And I'm going to save it just as a test. So now when I go to preset, notice I've got these options that have appeared. So here's what these options can do. And there are shortcuts I'll show you as well. But uh, the first one is I can um, clear the preset, which means everything will go away and I can start from scratch. So let's do that real quick. Clear preset. What happens when I do that? Oh, everything went away, including the title of my preset, the whole nine yards. So I have to reconstruct the preset, put in an amp block, put in a cab block. All right, and I'm gonna save it. So that's what clear does initialize is goes to every single block that's in the preset all the blocks that will be in it and goes to their default value so let me show you that so let's say I had this this amp set up my Bluto really loud you know I've got a cab over here and the cab is on solo this if I go to initialize preset it's gonna go to and initialize every block okay Notice all of a sudden, all my preset values that I had are gone. It's just initialized this back to that Bluto. And in the cab, it's initialized the cab back to the oval. So that's what the initialize preset does. It just sort of starts you from scratch all over again, but it keeps the blocks that you have in the line. Um, let's say I have made some changes. All right. Um, let's say I had saved this before. Remember, at three and whatever, at six. But now I've done this and I've moved that and I don't like my sound very much and I really liked it the way I'd saved it. If I come here and go refresh preset, notice what happens. Um, it's, it's just sort of reloading it, but it's keeping the parameters the same. But it's sort of reloading it. it that's sometimes if you get a glitch, that's a good thing to do. Now, what if I wanted to go backwards? I can go to revert preset and it's going to pull it back up to the actual settings that I had when I originally saved it. It will revert back to what is already saved in memory, sort of like reloading the preset. So that's how that menu item works. Of course, you've got the save preset here. That does the same thing as this save button over here, which is great. And you've got different options on how to save it over here, you'll notice. The same over here, they, they mirror it. So I can save the preset where it is, but I can also save this preset to a different preset number. It's right here right now. Maybe I want to save it to 10.4. So I can do that and click Save. And now instead of being in Axe 8 10.3, I'm going to be in Axe 8 10.4. I can save it to whatever spot I want to do it. I can also say what's called a snapshot, which is the same as this camera icon over here. A snapshot is just whatever you're working on at that moment, it'll save it. It's not saved in a preset format, it's saved as a snapshot. And if you click over here, you can see it saves it. If you right click the snapshot, it will show you which snapshots are saved under it. And you can clear the list. You can put them in a different folder. So snapshots are something if you're sort of tweaking a preset that you like the sound of, but you're sort of playing with it. You're going, I may want to go back to what I originally want. Let me just sort of see this. Instead of saving multiple preset versions, you, you can save different snapshot versions of it. So I'm going to clear that list, but that's a great item for that. You can also save all the blocks that you've got in this into the library that'll be under a folder of that preset's name. Why is that useful? Well, maybe you're doing multiple Van Halen presets and one way you want to save some of the blocks for it so you already know where they are and you want to do a Van Halen preset. That's one way to do it. Or maybe you want to move these blocks from your Axe 8 into an Axe Effects 
because the presets aren't compatible, the blocks may be compatible. And it's a way to move blocks between different uh, fractal devices. Uh, they usually work, not always, but usually. So that's what that menu does. Um, so that's what that does. Now it's taking a second. When it does something, it grays out until it comes back. Now you can import a preset, which is the same thing as loading a preset if you want to think about it that way. And there's a button here called import that does exactly what this does. And it'll bring up uh, wherever your stuff is. Where do you keep your presets? I keep my presets in here and I got all kinds of presets from different people. Here's some stuff I got from Dweezil's campaign. Um, so there's a Eddie Van Halen bundle and I can open this up and import it. And it might say something like, oh, I can't do this because that's not for an Axe 8. Well, too bad for us. So I've got to actually import, you know, Axe 8 presets when I do import. So let's see what I got here. And I don't have any Axe 8 presets, of course. Ha ha ha. Here's one from Larry Mitchell, I think. Or here's one that Matt did called Peep Durple. Ooh, that gave us an interesting sound. So that's a pretty complicated Axe 8 preset. Look at that. So uh, that's how you can import. You can do that from here. Um, and you also, while it's importing, can export, which is the same thing as saving a preset, but this is to your computer. So import is, is load from your computer and export is save to your computer. It's not saving it to the Axe 8. That happens up here. Down here is where you actually save it to your computer. So export or, uh, and then I can save it and that's where it goes. The same thing happens here when I click save, it'll save it into the memory. But if I wanna save it to the computer, I click it here and it'll save it to wherever I save my presets in my computer. Now, next item, export preset cab bundle. If you've got a preset that's got a user cab attached to it, let's say you've got my great Jimi Hendrix one um, from the Naked Amps Tone Pack, it's a great cab. You can save a preset and it will bundle this cab, user cab, with that preset. Now, you have to remember now, if you've got third-party commercial libraries, you're not supposed to save uh, or exchange those, share those with other people, but you can save a preset with the cab attached to it, which is really useful and cool when you found the perfect cab match for an amp. So when I export it as a cab bundle, it's gonna say where do I wanna export it to, and let's go to my X8 edit, and we'll go to X8 presets. And I want to name this bundle so, so I know it's the bundle. All right, and it saved it there. And now I can import that. And notice when I do that, it knows that it's a bundle. It's going to say, hey, I know that you're bringing in a preset, but it's going to say, you've got a cab bundle here. You need to tell us where you want this cab to be saved because we're going to put the cab right now into a scratch pad. So if you go to the cab right now, the preset will sound, but it's in the scratch pad. So you have to save, when you save it, you're going to need to assign it, all right, to a specific place now. You're gonna say, where do I want that cab to go in the future? And this is where you would assign that in a user cab. So that's how you manage that. Then there is an export to a spreadsheet. I don't really use that. You can check that out if you want, if you want to look at parameters and things like that. Then there's this cool template thing. Um, it, it's sort of like presets already. I, this is actually an innovation I had suggested early on in the Axe Edit process that sometimes you get, a, you get a rig that you really like, a preset that's all laid out the way you want. Say it's, um, you know, I've got a Captain Hook that I really like. I'm gonna bring that up and I like these particular uh, settings and the way I've got it set up, I can save this as a template in my presets, uh, or I have a template folder here, I should say, and I'm going to call this uh, my hook template. Now, what's cool about that is any 
time I want to go and I want to make a new preset somewhere, I can say, give me that template that I really like. What's really cool about templates is that I can now import that particular preset into whatever new sort of uh, preset that I want to make, and then I can make adjustments to it, but I know I've got the old template with these all in there, so I don't have to bring them in individually every time. So that's kind of the preset menu and the things that it does. Again, you can access some of these functions from the front. The import will help load a preset from your computer. That's what that does. The save will save the preset directly to your Axe 8, or you can export it to your computer as a regular preset or as a bundle, or you can save it as a template as well. And you can take snapshots of what you're working on and then pull those up if you like. So now there's a block menu. The block menu lets you do things specifically with blocks. And that's what these boxes are, as you see in here. Each one of these is a block. And when they're lit up, they're on. And when they're grayed out like this, they're off. So for example, I can go to the block here and I can just get rid of my, I'm cutting it so it's still available to me, but I'm taking it out here. And then if I want to, I can repaste that back. And there it is. Now, of course, I still have to make the connections work, but that lets me cut a block if I want to move it. I can also copy a block. Let's say I like, I want to have two delays. There's a lot of ways to do this, but I'm able to copy it. What's nice about these things is I could copy it out of this preset one and maybe go to a different preset and then paste my delay so I can move blocks between presets, which is really useful and cool. Um, if you find something you like somewhere and you want to put it in another preset, that's one way to do it. You can copy it and then you can paste it. And this menu does the same thing as the right click I was just doing. So let's see. So if I go to a block, I can right click and go to edit and I can cut, copy and paste from here. I can delete, reset and all these things, which is the same thing as this menu up here. I can delete this block altogether. Now when I delete a block, notice the connections are gone. So I'll lose my sound. I have to reestablish the cable to get a sound. I can reset a block. So if I reset a block, it will go to its original parameters. Okay? So it'll, it'll wipe everything out and say, if you pull up a block out of the blue, if I pull up a cab block right here, well, you can't, can't do two cab blocks, unfortunately, in Axe 8, but if I pulled up a second cab block in Axe FX, it would literally look like the one I just reset. So I can set the, reset the effect type, and I can disconnect everything as well. I can take all the blocks out if I want. See, so it's now not connected. All right, so that's what that does. For some reason, maybe I've got a block that's making a crazy bunch of noise and I wanna just turn it off for a little bit. So, this is the bypass and engage, and again, the easiest way to do this is to use your space bar when the yellow thing is here on your keyboard, or you can just double click it with your mouse and it'll turn it on and off. Either one of those does that, but here's the third way to do it. Um, you can toggle X and Y from here, and we haven't started talking about X and Y yet. That's the stuff that's over here. Um, you can toggle that from here like this, but you can also do it from here. I can go up here and toggle X, Y, and it will switch. You'll see it went from X to Y. So that menu item lets you do that. This affects scenes. I can say, what do I want to do with this block in scenes? Do I want to bypass it in all scenes? Okay. In every scene now, that block is going to be off. Okay. Or I can engage it in every single scene, and now it's on in every single scene. And we'll talk about scenes later. I can set it to X for every scene or Y to every scene. So that's a very useful thing when you're dealing with a lot of scenes. There are other ways to do it manually as well, but this is how you can do it from the menu. Do I want to move it? I could take this and I can move it and this will go up a whole row. Everything went up. Did you see that? Because I, I didn't have anything selected, but suppose I do this. Move and move it to a row down. Boom, everything moved down. Um, I can move everything left and right as well. So. Um, 
Again, I don't use this very often, but I just switched it. It moved to the left, and therefore it switched places with the other amp. Um, here, I can do it. You, again, you have to have the block selected for it to work. Uh, so I'm going to do column right. So it's moving out further. So I can manually, of course, move things around, which is how I usually do it. But it's nice to know that I've got these kinds of options. All right, so now I'm getting back to where the original preset was. I'll go back up here and I'll do revert preset and it'll go back to the original. Okay, now insert. Um, this is the way to do this through the uh, scenes. You can now insert blocks here. You can also insert just a plain old shunt where there could be a block. So let's say that you had a problem here. And you had a shunt that's missing, which I will take out here. I can insert a shunt, but it's still not connected all the way through, notice. I still have to do this to get it all the way. So just know that that's the case there. I don't use that very much myself. But here are all the different effects that you are still have available to you to add here. You can't add everything because of your CPU, but you can pick different effects, and uh, this is where you would add them. So uh, there's another way to do that, which I'm going to show you in a minute. It's a little better, uh, which is also this one. This is the library. It says, do you want to save this block to your effects library? And we're going to talk about the effects library in a, in a minute in part three. Or do you want to pick up one from your library? Like, for example, I've got this Angus one. And this is an Angus Plexi setup. This is how I think he sets his up. So I've got that pulled up now. You can use this menu to pull things from your block library, to save them to it, to save them as. You can rename it. Once you've, once you've pulled one up, let's say you didn't like the name of it, this lets you now rename it. I can call this Angus 1 or 2 or 3 maybe now or change the name of it. And again, we're going to go into this a little more briefly. I can delete the block in the library, so it's not in my library anymore. And again, I can recall blocks. And of course, blocks are really the great thing to save. I've got a lot of them, as you can see. So that's your block menu.